Hello and greetings from Iceland. Today I have a special treat for you. Since uh, I just got back from a long journey where I covered uh, all the major volcanic systems in Iceland. And in this video I will be showing you some samples of what is to come on the channel. This Highland tour did however not start very well for me. My first takeoff on the Highlands was by those windmills near the volcano Hekla and that is where I found out that my drone was failing on me big time. The gimbal that holds the camera and controls it was sending me gimbal motor overload warnings again and again. And when those warnings appear, that means that the gimbal is struggling and the videos are shaky and unusable. And this same problem did actually ruin some files that are shot by the volcano Aska recently. I thought that I had uh, fixed this. This is due to dust or just a little grain of sand. And uh, I had no time to drive to Reykjavik to have the drone repaired. I did actually have the thermal drone with me as well. But it has a different color profile than the DJI drone that I use uh, all the time. And this thermal drone was very expensive and I'm not going to wear it out. Or do the same tasks that the camera drone does, so I had no option but to work around this problem and I could do so up to a limit. But this did however shorten the flight time that I had and it was very frustrating for a while. Since I had high hopes for this journey, this road is called Landmannaleið to Landmannalaugar hot springs and from that road I took a detour into the Torvajökull region or Iceland's largest caldera. That is actually quite hard to see in the landscape and uh, the reason I went up there is that uh, land uplift was detected there recently and uh, as for geology, this is by far the most mysterious place we have and this was uh, quite a task for my car. I have a small uh, four-wheel drive Honda that was uh, not supposed to be there. This is a trail for bigger jeeps, but uh, I needed the photos. And uh, this was my first tour up there and uh, I knew it instantly when I was up there that this place would need uh, way more time and uh, also better light since uh, like always sometimes I get lucky with sunlight sometimes not and as for this place the colors didn't pop as I would have liked them to but it was bright enough to give you an idea about what we can expect. And uh, this caldera is packed with formations, colors, hot springs, and uh, I hope to be able to get back there uh, before this winter, if not for sure uh, next year. But the detour I did now, it helped me a lot to uh, see what to expect. And uh, my next uh, stopover was by this uh, famous spot called the Landmannalaugar, by the edge of the Torvajökull caldera. Mother Nature was a bit more friendly there and decided to give me some 10-15 minutes so the colors would pop while I did the video and uh, lucky me, the drone delivered this time. So this uh, first day worked out uh, okay and the morning after I took off to a place called Veidva, that means uh, fishing lakes and they are by a place called Vatnaöldur, that means uh, water waves but they have nothing to do with water. Tefra waves or ash waves would be a better name and the largest lava flow on earth from a singular eruption since the end of the last ice age occurred around here and the lava from the eruption covers over 900 square kilometers and it was channeled through riverbeds more than 130 kilometers all the way to the south coast and this is also where the Bárðarbunga system from Vatnajökull Glacier Iceland's hotspot has been intruding into the Torvajökull system and one of the largest eruptions in Iceland in historical time occurred around here in the year 1477. That was a large explosive basaltic eruption. The groundwater level here is high and the eruption deposited around 10 cubic kilometers of tefra. It is very hard to find words to describe the landscape around here. But I will try to do so in my videos later on. And on my way back to the south coast, I drove through Landmannalaugar again, managed to get one decent flight over there and finished the day by one of the largest, or if not the largest, 
Volcano Canyon in the World from Historic Times or Eldgjón, that means Fire Canyon. And it was the largest volcanic eruption in Iceland since the country was settled 1100 years ago that created this. And I've been wanting to get footage from this place for a long time due to all the unrest in the volcano Katla, but that is where this eruption originated. And you can see Katla here in the background. Recent studies indicate that the lava from Elgjá is around 18 cubic kilometers, covering about 800 square kilometers. And the Katla system both erupted under the glacier and outside it, 75 kilometer long fissure. And it is believed that the eruption lasted for three to perhaps eight years. And this is the most extreme part of the fissure, up to 600 meters wide and 200 meters deep. The eruption took place in the year 934 and in geology that is last week. So try to imagine this canyon full of fire and then we know how large the Katla system really is. And that might be the reason why we don't talk so much about this system here in Iceland. Deep in the canyon we find a little tourist sign saying that uh, there was this eruption here some time ago and if you drive a bit further south you can buy hot dogs there or uh, something like that. But in my opinion it is those large systems that we need to talk about. Katla is not dead, Bárðarbunga is not dead and the Torvajökull system is just waking up again. And uh, I could have spent a uh, few days there filming the complete fissure, not just the tourist bits, but it was getting late and uh, on my way down to highway number one, I drove through yet another lava field from a major eruption or the Laki eruption. This farm that we are looking at, it survived, but the other farms behind it, they will never be seen again. So the next day I found myself uh, yet another terrible highland road and drove all the way up to the lucky craters and around them. And that famous eruption originated under Vatnajökull glacier, but not the Bárðarbunga system. It was the Grimsot system next door that is responsible for this disaster that killed 20% of all Icelanders and half of our livestock during and after the eruption in 1783. 130 craters. The crater row is 25 km long and stretches all the way under the glacier. And Grimsvöð is Iceland's most active volcano and uh, getting ready for a new eruption that will most likely take place under the glacier. So the story of this system is larger than life and I've never made a proper video about it since I needed good footage. And uh, as for the lucky trip, I did not get the best day as for sunlight but it was not the worst day either and despite all my technical problems I came back with much needed footage from all the most important systems when it comes to history and the geological history of Iceland. And to process those files is uh, lots of work, so I'm just showing you a few bits now, but my goals are simple. I have been uh, uploading uh, mini documentaries about our volcanoes every now and then, and by time they will cover each and every system in depth or videos that I can link to when uh, I do my shorter updates. So I don't have to repeat myself too often. So uh, I'm just saying that you will get longer versions from each and every system as soon as possible. But I do have more tours to do before the winter hits us. We will be getting the hard light soon with this extremely good visibility, no haze only sharpness and the colors will pop out big time. And from time to time we will get some northern light bonus features. That season is starting, so I have no time to send my drone to Reykjavík from where it might be shipped uh, abroad to be uh, fixed. So I decided to waste no time whining and upgrade it from my DJI Air 2S up to a new model called the DJI Air 3 and uh, it will be here in two or three days. And this is very good news for my channel, since uh, what I will be getting with this upgrade is uh, at least uh, 10 extra minutes in flying time from each battery and supports the longer range that I will also be getting, or uh, three to five kilometers more than I have today. 
and this new version has uh, better low light capabilities but the biggest change is the second camera will be getting so it is equipped with two cameras and the second one has uh, zoom without any loss of quality so uh, i'm talking about massive improvements i will be getting and uh, i'm getting ready to move back on the road in a few days my car is actually making some new sounds now that i need to check out after some of the worst roads in iceland but uh, i did however give it a good bath every now and then and uh, since we are almost into september it means that we only need one cold night and all highland roads will close until june next year but i do however have the feeling that the autumn will be good and uh, i sure hope so there were two tasks that i didn't finish in my last tour one was to capture the area where the earthquakes are now or those strange earthquakes by longjökull glacier there is a highland road nearby but uh, it turned out to be a bit too risky or one of the roads for bigger jeeps and uh, i might be able to work around that with a friend soon and the second task that i had to leave for later was to stop by on the Reykjanes Peninsula and to do a thermal scan or by Mount Keilir where the earthquakes are now. There have been talks about a magma intrusion around there but the summer is the worst time for thermal scanning so I decided to hold on for one or two more weeks since uh, I'm going to Reykjavik soon. But I do get uh, questions about the thermal drone every now and then. It was actually my plan to uh, do more with it this summer but we got this eruption in July that kept me busy for a while and uh, as soon as uh, it cools down a bit I have plenty of tasks and the next 40 to 50 days will be very important or until mid-October. That is when the light gets a bit dull for a while or until we are into winter. So my plan is very simple now. Use this new equipment I've been getting to the fullest so when we move into winter I will have a plenty to show you and only good stuff. And uh, finally, I want to mention that there are many ways to support my work while my channel still needs it like it does or to make this simple. This is not a huge uh, channel, but I'm putting huge amounts of work into it. And uh, I'm very grateful to you who have been helping me out with this. And uh, please remember that uh, your subscription loan is highly appreciated, just like your comments and the likes that help me to uh, make the channel more visible and i'm also glad to say that this is all moving into the right direction i have uh, most of the equipment i need to make the kind of videos i want to make and for me this is all about to bring you closer with more quality and uh, this video was a kind of teaser for what is to come or this spectacular landscape that we have here in iceland or uh, as i've often been saying I'm just starting, and with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.